Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have a very eventful evening this evening for you. Uh, starting off first in Israel. As you can see here on your screen and behind you here, Hazim Terrorist was a Palestinian Authority intelligence officer. This was reported by Ari Sofer. Um, and this, uh, this, this actually happened, I believe it was earlier today or yesterday, one there. The terrorist who shot two Israelis just north of Jerusalem was identified as a Mazin Hassan uh, or, or, by, or by a, an officer of the PA Security Services. Uh, the Arab terrorist who shot and wounded two Israelis at Hazim Checkpoint north of Jerusalem earlier Thursday uh, has been identified as an officer in the Palestinian Authority uh, Preventative Security Service. He, he was a 37-year-old uh, Mazin Hassan Orbe from Abu Dis neighborhood in Jerusalem. Orbe was killed by the IDF, uh, or when the, actually when the IDF returned, fired after opening a fire at the checkpoint from the direction of the Arab village of Hazim. Hazim checkpoint is the major artery into Jerusalem from Samaria. One of the victims was hospitalized in serious condition while a second was lightly wounded there. Those of you that may not be aware there, uh, if you've ever visited Jerusalem and you go up, say, to the Temple, uh, not to the Temple Mount, but up to the um, uh, King David's tomb, and the Holy Sepulchre, the, 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 or not the Holy Sepulchre, but the... Um, uh, the room on top of King David's tomb, the Last Supper, the site of the Last Supper. Uh, if you go out that door there, there is a set of steps that will take you up to the roof there. If you were to go there, you can actually look across the Kidron Valley. You'll see one of the 20-foot walls there, the security fence that Israel was building to separate the West Bank from Israel. Uh, but that ended up ceasing. Of course, the reason that actually ceased is because they had reached an agreement on a two-state solution, which they've never officially announced, uh, and they could not complete it because it would just cut off uh, the Palestinians uh, from Jerusalem, which is going to be part of their own capital in the very near future there. Uh, so anyway, this is where that actually took place at, so I just thought if maybe some of you guys have ever been there before, it might bring back a memory to you there to say, oh gosh, gosh, I remember that place and know exactly where you're talking about. Uh, other things happening also in Israel, there is a lot of things that have been happening in Israel. Uh, today there was another stabbing in Jerusalem. Um, shooting north of Jerusalem ends with a miracle, uh, is the article that we have here. And uh, also one wounded in a, in, in a Jerusalem stabbing there. Uh, bring you to that story first, since I mentioned that one first. And uh, that was an Arab terrorist conducted a stabbing attack on Thursday evening uh, at the Damascus Gate of Jerusalem, the old city, leaving an officer moderately wounded. Let me just uh, kind of warn our tourist friends that are there, some of the brothers, sisters that may be visiting Israel. Uh, Damascus Gate is a very common gate that people go out from the Arab quarter going towards the uh, that, that would actually lead you out when you go out the Damascus Gate. That, that's the Damascus Highway that actually goes right up there to the uh, Garden Tomb. And a lot of people go in and out that gate, uh, not as much as Joppa Gate up on the top of the hill there, but this is the north side of the city and uh, instead of the west side of the city. But the, the north side there, I've seen many tourists come in and out of that gate there. It is a Palestinian neighborhood. It is a very dangerous place for tourists as well because you have to understand they are willing to target tourists uh, not just the Jewish people just give it time they're going to take out tourists as well so I would just caution those of you that are that are visiting Israel uh, as well as if you make plans to stay in the old city of Jerusalem really check to see where your hotel is uh, it is very vital that you stay in a safe place, not in the Arab quarter. It is dangerous to do so because um, you never know when someone's going to snap, especially in this case here. We found out that a Palestinian authority, uh, security authority there, actually, he snapped, pulled the gun out, and began to shoot uh, Israelis. Uh, so very, very serious situation there. Anyway, Morgan David, um, the ambulance service there, emergency medical crews were dispatched to the scene and provided treatment to the officer who was, who was uh, around 35 years old before evacuating him to Shahar Sadiq Hospital for further care. The MDA paramedic uh, Zaki Yahav was treated. The victim said when he arrived on the scene, we saw a man aged around 35 lying on the ground fully conscious. Uh, he suffered wounds to his limbs. Uh, we evacuated him to the Shait Sadiq Hospital while providing medical treatment, including stopping the bleeding, prov uh, providing fluids and medicine against the pain, said the, said the medic there. 
uh, very serious situation that we have going on indeed. Uh, and one other thing too, I wanted to kind of remind you or let you guys be aware of in case you have not heard about this. We had meant to bring this out in the news a few days ago, but we had not as of yet. I, I just happened to see uh, Rouhani's uh, photo pop up on the screen here, uh, the Iranian president, and it reminded me of this. The United States never got a signed deal with Iran for, to stop the nuke program. Uh, Iran did get the lifting of sanctions, but they did not agree to sign the deal that the U.S. had brokered. Uh, and so basically all the senators and congressmen, either they were duped into believing it really happened, or, well, maybe they were aware of it and just didn't want to be aware of it. I, I don't know what the case is there. I don't want to blame the congressmen and senators because many of them do stand with Israel, and I thank God for that. But who knows what really is the, the, the situation there. Um, the shooting north of Jerusalem ends with a miracle as the article this this is this speaking about right here. And um, uh, just, to, just to share that with you, an Arab terrorist opened fire on a car in Benjamin region of Samaria just north of Jerusalem on Thursday night, causing no wounds but inflicting damage on the vehicle according to the driver. The incident took place between uh, Kachov Yaakov Paskat and the windows of the car were shattered by the gunfire. Large uh, IDF and police forces were deployed to track down the attacker, and the sections of the road were closed to traffic. The town Piscot counts on additional miracle tonight. Uh, read a statement released by the community in reference to the uh, coming Hanukkah, um, coming Hanukkah holiday that celebrates the, the miraculous defeat of the Greek occupation over 2,000 years ago. Uh, just another interesting situation there that is that is going on. Um, anyway, there. This is uh, just to kind of give you maybe a little bit of a video footage there, so you guys can see what actually happened. I don't know how well you can pick it up. It is dark in the filming here. Uh, this is the car that was was being driven there that was shot. You can see the bullet bullet holes in the front of the car, uh, bullet holes uh, scaving the top bullet hole. Uh, in the mirror of the car, and I believe also the driver window is shot completely, completely out there. So it truly, truly was a, a miracle to say the very least there. We see bullet, bullet uh, protrusions there on the side of the door, et cetera, to the back of the vehicle. So um, uh, very, very dangerous situation indeed for the Jewish people there. Going into other news there, I wanted to kind of share something with you here. Uh, when we were on earlier this evening on the um, broadcast with Bonnie and Ron on Hebrew Nation Radio this evening, uh, I mentioned to them in, an, in the scripture of Jeremiah, something that caught, really caught my eye that I thought was interesting. If you look at Jeremiah chapter 1, when Jeremiah speaks about before I... Before God speaks, speaks to him and says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations or the Gentiles. Well, we know that the word is interchangeable easily, but it is goim. I have appointed you a prophet to the Gentiles. Uh, then I said us last, uh, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak because I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth because everywhere I send you, you shall go and all that I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of them for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Now, going on down further in chapter 1, very interesting vision that God shows him and that is of the boiling pot. And he says here, and this is in verse, uh, going into verse 13, where the, uh, the Lord, of, excuse me, the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I, a boiling pot facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north, the evil will break forth of all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all families of the kingdoms of the earth, declares the Lord. They will come and they will set each one of his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. Interesting, isn't it? And uh, goes on to say, um, let's see, I lost my place right there. Uh, and against its walls round about against all the cities of Judah, I will pronounce my judgments on, the cons uh, on them concerning all their wickedness, whereby they have forsaken me 
and have offered sacrifices to other gods and worship the works of their own hands. Now gird up your loins and arise and speak to them all which I command you. Do not be dismayed before them or I will dismay you before them. Now behold, I will, uh, and it continues on down there. Now what really caught my attention about this here is we know that Jeremiah was prophesying back in these days here regarding issues, uh, the Babylonians that were coming down to take Israel and to send her into captivity. But it also is kind of interesting to me because clearly it speaks of the day that we're living in now because truly those of the north have come down and they have come against Israel and they have built up all around the walls of Jerusalem. Even if you look at the churches, for example, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, as they call it, the Holy Sepulchre, it's not holy at all. And, uh, and yet the Russian Orthodox Church outside the walls of Jerusalem and, and the Church of All Nations, they're, they're represented there with all their different religions that they have. And now we see that God, just like the Gog and Magog war, we see that Gog would be drugged down to Israel with a hook in his jaw. God bringing them down there in order to fight against Israel. Why? Because God is going to bring his judgment upon the nations. And I've been seeing article after article. Britain now is approved to go in and bomb Syria. Russia, flat out, Vladimir Putin said, and let me just take you to this real quick. This is a stunning, I mean a stunning article here. And he says here on live, uh, live news today, he says, We have every reason to believe the decision to shoot down our aircraft was dictated by the desire to ensure the safety of the supply routes of oil to Turkey to the ports where they are shipped in tankers. This is what uh, Vladimir Putin says here. Now, the one, though, that I really want to bring to your attention he posted this here on Israeli News Live. This, this, this is the one that is the most powerful of all. And this here is on, um, I believe I've got the right article here. I'll see here in just a second. Mm, that's not the right one. Let me go a little further down here. Um, okay, I think I've got it here. It's RT News. Uh, okay, that's, a, that's another one, in fact. That's another one that I wanted to bring out to you guys. By the way, you can find the articles that we post on Israeli News Live. Uh, these here on our Facebook page, uh, very, very powerful articles here uh, that we find that we always share here. And, and the ones that we share in our news broadcast, we always put there as well. And the one I'm actually looking for is where Vladimir Putin flat out says about Turkey, if you think that sanctions are the only thing that we intend to do, you're sadly mistaken. And uh, let, me, let me just come back to this one. This may be the article here. Let me just see. Um, we've heard from the Turkish side that, that this decision was not made by the president. It was made by other people. For us, it does not matter much. The important thing is, is that two of our servicemen died as a, as a result of this criminal move, he told reporters. Now, by the way, he's not speaking about uh, the, the pilot and the, the, the co-pilot or, or the um, navigator, but he's talking about the... Uh, the uh, the Marine that was there in the rescue operation. Um, and I thought this is where I had this at. But anyway, Vladimir Putin does say, state that sanctions will not be the only course of action that we take. Um, let me see if I can quickly pull this up for you because I really, really want you guys to be able to see this here. I don't want to lose the one that he did about Allah either. Uh, that was another shock to me that, that, that he actually calls and says that Allah is punishing Turkey. Uh, that, that was just a, a bombshell to me. And by the way, too, another article for you guys on TASS Russian News there uh, that uh, the Ukraine is sending in more tanks into the Donsk region there. Uh, that's uh, uh, this article right here. Around 40 units of equipment moved to contact line in Donbass. Uh, the DPR Defense Ministry, according to, the, to there, you can see them moving there. Their tanks um, are, that are moving in. Ukrainian forces have moved 39 artillery systems and tanks to the contact line in Donbass, uh, the self-proclaimed Donetsk uh, People's Republic there. Uh, I, I do believe, and, and I do have some proof on this, that, 
that the United States is involved in pushing Ukraine to do this. And when I say that they're involved, one of the other articles that I have here is that the Ukrainians had actually captured um, one or two men they were holding and they actually released them that were working for the CIA. Uh, that's right here on Sputnik News. Uh, you can see uh, the photograph here of one of the Americans there. They were both Americans. It says that uh, according to the media reports, Donson authorities detained the two U.S. nationals, members of the Intelli excuse me, International Rescue Committee. Committee. About 10 days ago, we have released uh, two U.S. citizens in light of May 9th. On, uh, one of them was a CIA employee, while the second one has been recruited by the CIA. They were here to gather intelligence. Now, this happened back in May. The point is, is the U.S. is still very active in what goes on in Ukraine. And I, for one, have, have realized more and more uh, that, that this situation is just really, really uh, getting out of control there. Let me see if I can quickly, I thought I had this here, but let me see if we can't quickly pull this up where Putin um, uh, speaks about... Um, uh, guys, those of you that are watching on Israeli News Live, thank you for bearing with me just a moment here. I really want you to see this. I thought I had this up already, but undoubtedly I do not. Um, uh, let me, well, let's kind of go over this article here. This is on NBC News. Vladimir Putin and Turkey's leaders are stuffing pockets with ISIS oil cash. Um, I know it was in a public address that just happened as well where he makes a comment that I'm wanting to share with you. This here says Russian President Vladimir Putin has accused Turkey leaders of uh, collusion with ISIS, alluding to the accusation that Turkey's president benefits personally from the militants' illegal oil trade. We know who are, who are stuffing pockets in Turkey and letting terrorists prosper from the sale of oil they stole in Syria, Putin said during the annual State of the Nation address. The terrorists are using these uh, uh, receipts to recruit mercenaries by weapons and plan inhumane terrorist attacks. Putin's remarks came a day after his defense minister openly uh, uh, alleged that Turkish President uh, Recep Tayyip Erd uh, Erdogan and his family were involved in the ISIS illegal oil trade. We never, we will never forget their collusion with terrorists, Putin said Thursday. We have always deemed betrayal the worst and most shameful thing to do, and that that will never change. Uh, this this article may bring it out as well. Let's see the comments were the latest. Uh, what has been deteriorating relationship between Russia and NATO member Turkey after the latter. Uh, downed a, uh, a Russian fighter jet last month. Putin has already ordered economic sanctions against Turkey, banning imports of some Turkish goods. He used his address on Thursday to hint that that move was to come. If, here, I think this is it here. If someone thinks they can commit a heinous war crime, kill our people and get away with it, suffering nothing but a ban of tomato imports or a few restrictions in construction or other industries, they're delusional, the Russian leader says. Uh, we'll, remind, uh, we'll remind them of what they did more than once. They'll regret it. We know what to do. Friends, this is very serious. It is, it is getting very, very serious there. Um, and the United States, the State Department in the U.S. is still standing behind uh, Turkey, their NATO ally there in in even in light of the information that has come forward. Uh, they stand behind Turkey 100%. They said that they are in good standing with them. They deny the fact that any of the uh, government officials are involved in this. And, uh, and, and quite frankly, like I said, it, it is a very serious, serious situation there that is unraveling in, uh, in Syria there. But our concern is, as well, we know that Germany... Uh, as well is now entered into the to the stage the field here with uh, the U.S. coalition against ISIS in Syria. We know that uh, uh, the United States has talked about sending in troops uh, into Syria. Uh, we know that also that um, Great Britain today voted to send in bombers to bomb in this region as well, and. But quite frankly, as I'm seeing these things going on, I am really wondering if this is not just a front saying that they're bringing this in, but there is a battle over control of the Middle East. And it has been really a shock for the NATO allies to see 
that Russia moved into this area as rapidly as they did, and they've taken the stand that they have. Uh, it has shocked many, many people, to say the very least. And in doing so, um, uh, people are just left speechless, you might want to say, uh, in, in this. And so they are they're scrambling to try to regain control of this area. Now, one other thing I did want to bring out, and if you guys are aware, by the way, because what I'm fixing to, to share with you here is, is really a shocking comment that Vladimir Putin has stated, and I would like to know if, a, if any U.S. president, senator, or congressman has ever gone so far as to make such a statement, but um, Vladimir Putin actually uh, speaks uh, today, and, and in his uh, speech there, he talks about uh, Allah. Uh, as being the one that uh, is leading. Yes, this is it right here. It's on RT News. And uh, I want to share this with you. He says, Allah took their sanity. Putin accuses Turkish leadership of aiding terror. Now, that just, it floored me. Now, I, I, I shouldn't have been really surprised because we know that Vladimir Putin is allies with all kinds of Arabic nations. In fact, his his strength with the Arabic nations is growing greater and greater all the time. But if you'll notice, he's, he's allied with Shiite Muslims, uh, whereas the United States and the Vatican are allied with the Sunni Muslims. Uh, so what we see here is in, like for example, with um, Syria, Basar al-Assad, he is a Shiite, but he's ruling in a nation that is majority Sunnis. And uh, Russia, though, also is an ally with, with Iran, which is a Shiite nation. And uh, I think he is trying to build a stronger alliance with the Muslim world by quoting or stating that Allah did this. Uh, let me just share with you what he says here. He says, we are prepared to cooperate with Turkey on most sensitive issues and go further than their allies. Allah knows why they did it. Apparently, Allah decided to punish the ruling, ruling clique in Turkey by taking their sanity, Putin said. Um, and then he says, we have many friends in Turkey. They, they should know that we do not equate them and part of the current Turkish leadership, which holds a direct responsibility for the deaths of our troops in Syria. Now, friends, I have to tell you, quite frankly to me, when I see Vladimir Putin speaking like this, it is obvious he is preparing for a battle. He is also trying to get certain people in Turkey on his side, especially those journalists, journalists in Turkey that have come against the government with freedom of press but have been arrested. So he is very smart in what he's doing. He is definitely looking to isolate out those that would be loyal to what he is doing and to try to get uh, what you might call uh, to, to, to destabilize the country of Turkey itself doing very much the same things that the United States is, is very eloquent at doing, and that is to destabilize a region, cause civil unrest, civil strife, and then at the same time when he does do an aerial campaign there, he will be able to find allies on the ground to help him to overthrow Erdogan in the process of doing this. Very clever indeed, if you ask me. Uh, I can't say that I agree with all these things because when it comes to the end of the day, what are they all down there for in the first place? They're down there to attack Israel once the time comes at the right time. And they will build an alliance together when they do because the Bible clearly says that all nations shall come to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. God will bring them all down and enter into judgment with them. So even Russia, even Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, will actually come against Israel in the near future. But first, it looks like we are going to see a war between Russia and NATO. That's only a matter of time, and it looks like it's coming faster than we expect. I'm Stephen Benoon.